بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم اما بعد الله سبحانه وتعالى has commanded us to do those things which are lawful those things which will help us have taqwa Allah azza wa jal Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded us to eat of the good things, to eat of that which is halal, halal foods. And this will help us in our dunya wal akhirah. It will help us in this life by eating lawful and healthy living. And it will help us in the hereafter by doing those things which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded us with. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded us to eat the tayyibat, to eat, eat those good healthy things. And that means those things which are halal and lawful for us. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves that we spend in our wealth for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we have lawful earnings. So stay away from riba. Stay away from the muharramat. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said regarding the lawful things. And the unlawful things. Qala sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, inna al-halal bayin, wa inna al-haram bayin, wa baynahuma umur mushtabiha, la ya'lamun, la ya'lamuhunna kathira min al-nas. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, verily the halal is clear, and verily the haram is clear, and between them are doubtful things that many of the people are, are unaware of. And then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so, said, wa taqo shubahat. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam warned us, to, to avoid those doubtful things. Stay away from the doubtful earnings. Stay away from the doubtful, those things which you don't know, is it halal or haram? Whether it be in your business transaction, whether it be in your food. If you don't know, try to, to, to uh, avoid it. Avoid it as much as possible. Because the one who protects themselves from the Muharram, they protect their religion and they protect their honor. And regarding the Tayyibat, those things which are good and lawful for us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fi kitabi al-kareem, Ya ayyuh al-ladheena amanu kulu min tayyibati ma razaqnaakum wa shkuru lillahi in kuntum iyyahu ta'budun wa shkuru lillahi in kuntum iyyahu ta'budun innama harrama alaykum al-mayyita wal-dam wal-lahm al-khanziri wa ma uhilla bi li ghayri allah faman ittura عن غير الباغ ولا عاد فلا إثم عليه إن الله غفور رحيم. الله سبحانه وتعالى says في كتابه الكريم. O you who believe, eat of the lawful things that we have provided for you, and be grateful to Allah if it is indeed Him who you worship. So if you worship Allah سبحانه وتعالى, then show your gratefulness by being obedient to Him. In kuntum iyahu ta'budun, if it is indeed He who you worship, and then Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says He has forbidden you only the the dead animals and blood and the flesh of swine and that which is slaughtered as a sacrifice for others than Allah, meaning slaughtered for idols and slaughtered to the olia to to dead saints and to your grandparents and whatever reasons people slaughter animals that has involved shirk. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's name is not uh, pronounced on it, then avoid it. But if one is forced by necessity, without willful disobedience, nor transgressing due limits, then there is no sin on him. Truly Allah is all forgiving, most merciful. SubhanAllah. In those two ayat from Kitab al kareem there are two very important kawaid uh, in the uh, fiqh principles that are derived from these ayat or applicable uh, with pertaining to these ayat. The first thing is that the, the ulama, they say that al, uh, al, al-aslu fi mu'amalat ibaha, that the origin of transactions and things, of course, are foods and and everything that does not pertain specifically to ibadah is that it's permissible. The asl is that it's permissible. You can eat anything, you can wear anything, unless there's a text from the sharia, from kitab or sunnah, there's dalil to show that it is impermissible. Meaning, dalil, as we've mentioned, 
Dalil is from the Quran. Dalil is from the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Dalil is from the Ijma of the uh, of the Ulama, and and Dalil is also from Qiyas al Sahiha, making uh, an an analogy, an analogy, a sound analogy from other Islamic text. These are the four levels of Adilla, the four types of Adilla. Pertinent to this ayat, this ayat affirms for us that thing, things are permit, permissible for us, except those things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala specifically mentioned. Allah mentioned in this ayat, He said He's forbidden, uh, He's forbidden you only dead animals and blood. Those, you know, so that's why we slaughter our animals and we bleed them. And the flesh of swine and pork. And then, of course, there's other things that are come from the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alaihi wasallam, which specify for us what is permit, what is impermissible. And so, the details of what is impermissible is made clear in the Sharia. And then, those things which are permissible is left open, meaning that the asal is is that it's permissible for us as long as it is not forbidden by the Sharia. Another important uh, qaida here. In this uh, contained in these ayat is in the last part of the ayat where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says but if one is forced by necessity without willful disobedience nor transgressing due limits then there is no sin on him truly Allah is all forgiving most merciful so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has established the other qaida for us which is al al durura yubih al mahdurat or kamaqil that when there's a necessity then the impermissible becomes permissible so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us the uh, example of pork of swine that swine aslan is haram it's made haram by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger alayhi salatu wasalam you know made it in in the Quran and the sunnah however if you are forced if you are forced either maybe someone's threatening your life or the other situation of perhaps uh, you're starving, you're in a situation and, and, and you're, you're, you're going to die, you're fearful of death, then in those uh, situations there is no sin upon you. It is permissible for you to eat that pork and better for you to sustain your life, to keep your life going. Al-Durura yubih al-Mahdurat or to be al mahdurat that when a necessity it makes permissible those things which normally are impermissible that shows you the rahmah of Allah the mercy of your lord and the mercy of the sharia and that's why right after that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says fala ithma alayh then there's no sin upon him in the Allah ghafur rahim verily Allah is the most the all forgiving the most merciful Showing the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that the, that the religion of Islam is practical, that there's a situ, there, there's a hukum, a ruling for every situation. But that requires ilm, it requires us seeking knowledge and learning about our religion, and seeking knowledge enough to we can ask the people of knowledge educated and intelligent questions, carefully articulated, so that way we will understand what the uh, ruling is and how, how to practice our religion. And those are just some of those some of the benefits from the Zahir of the Ahad and Nusus without even going into the Tafsir. Those are some benefits that we can gain from those ayat that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us with the good to eat and live uh, healthy lives. And also that our provisions should be lawful, that we should have lawful halal provisions, even though sometimes we're scared about our risk, we're scared about different things in our life, but str strive your utmost to to deal with lawful transactions and to eat lawful and to wear lawful clothing and, and to do those things which are lawful in accordance with Kitab Allah wa Sunnah Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us of our sins. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.